This video will show how to paint ponds for board games in a variety of colors. Keep in mind that this will be a fairly simple video, mainly aimed at those who like board games but do not do many craft projects. These are castle ponds I had created for the Condottier board game. This video will show how to bring out the details of the pieces while also keeping the colors rich so you can tell your color of ponds from your opponents. Before you paint, I strongly suggest you glue together several test pieces to practice painting on. Here are the pawns that I'm using for the game, and over here are the extra pieces made by gluing together leftover blocks. Test pieces are great for seeing what your paint job will look like without messing up your good pieces. I'm going to show two different ways to paint these game pawns. Which method you choose will depend on how you want them to look and how much work you want to put into them. The first method, I'll paint the pawn a solid color and then apply an ink wash over it to darken the windows and the cracks. This is the easiest method to do and will add a lot of detail to the pieces. The other method involves dry brushing white paint on the pieces and then applying a stain to bring the color back. For whichever method you choose, you'll need some paint. Since these pieces were cast in dental stone, I'm going to use inexpensive acrylic craft paint which should stick well to them. I do not suggest that you use miniature paints because they're a lot more expensive. A small bottle of this paint can cost up to $7, but this size bottle of craft paint only costs 50 cents. If you want to paint plastic pieces that you've had 3D printed, then you probably will need to spray paint them or use plastic model paints to paint them. This video will not cover how to paint plastic parts, but you still may find the dry brushing information in this video useful for plastic. Unless you want paint all over your hands, I suggest wearing a plastic glove on the hand holding the piece to be painted. You may also want to put down some newspaper or trash bag to keep the paint off the table. I also have some small white plastic cups to squirt the paint into. You want a cup of water to clean out your brush and always have a roll of paper towels nearby. Painting the ponds is pretty straightforward. Just be sure to jam the brush down into all the cracks while you slop the paint on. You want to force the paint down into the windows and the narrow gaps. Afterwards, remove the excess paint out of the brush by scraping it on the side of the cup. Then dab up any excess blobs and drips to get a nice thin coat all over. After the paint is dried, look over the piece. Depending on how well the paint covered, you may need to apply another coat of paint to it. You may see windows or small areas that paint did not get into. Many times colors such as yellow and red are transparent colors. This means that no matter how many coats of paint you put on them, the color underneath will usually show through. If you would cast your piece in white dental stone, then this won't be a problem. However, I've cast my pieces in gray dental stone and the gray might show through. To solve this, I'll put a coat of white paint under the yellows and reds to keep the colors bright. I don't recommend using neon or fluorescent colors unless you really want them. All neon colors are transparent, so you must have a white surface underneath. Finally, don't forget to paint up lots of test pieces, doing several for each color. These will come in handy to practice applying ink washes and dry brushing later on. Let's start with the first method, which involves applying an ink wash onto the paint. Applying an ink wash over your pieces will darken the windows and deep cracks to bring out the details. If you want to apply an ink wash, then you'll want to choose lighter colors for your pieces. If you paint your pieces using dark colors, the ink wash will be harder to see. Here you can see an ink wash over a medium color of blue, compared to an ink wash put over a dark blue. These are the six colors I've chosen for my game pawns. For my gray color, I've mixed up one part black and two parts white. The ink wash I'm using is called Nuln Oil from Games Workshop. This is usually used for gaming miniatures and runs about $7 a bottle. I know this is expensive and I also know there are several sources on the internet that show you how to mix up your own ink wash. But for this small of a project, it would still be more expensive to make your own ink wash from scratch. Applying the ink wash is easy. Pour the whole bottle into a small plastic cup to make it easier to get to. We'll pour what's left over back into the bottle after we're done. Dip the brush into the ink, then liberally apply it all over and jam the brush down into the details. Do this while holding the piece over the cup and let the excess drip back into the cup. Set it down and apply the wash to a few more pieces. After you've done about five of them, squeeze out the excess ink from the brush and dab up any large puddles of ink around the bottom of the pieces. 
If you take off too much ink, you can always apply more back onto the piece. I found this wash on the light colors to be a little bit too dark and dirty. So what I've done is I added just a little bit of water to it. Uh, I wouldn't go half water, but I would just add just a little bit of water to it and then try it again on another piece. So I'm setting the piece down and I still have quite a bit of uh, ink wash in the brush, but what you want to do is kind of mop up the puddles around the outside of it and just kind of uh, spin it around there and look at the back side. And you can kind of see under the, under the windows, just dab up any excess. And that looks actually pretty good. Just a little bit of water to the wash helped it not be quite so grimy and made it a little more controllable. I think that'll work pretty well. The main Condottier token is going to be painted dark gray, made from three parts black and one part white. If you paint this thing solid black, you won't be able to see the ink wash that's put on top of it. The second method will be to dry brush the pieces with white paint and apply a glaze made of food coloring to bring the color back. The food coloring will restore and add color to the piece while still preserving the highlights from the dry brushing. Now you can buy miniature glazes for about $7 a bottle, but this pack of food coloring has all the colors I need, it only costs $2, and you can buy it at Walmart. For this method, you'll want to use darker colors for the base coat. For a color such as yellow, I'm using a mustard or dark sand color. The dark gray shown here is made by mixing three parts black to one part white. Since the cathedral piece is going to end up being white, I'm going to paint it a light gray made of one part black and three parts white. For the dry brushing, you're going to need a nice soft brush. This one's about a half inch wide. Get the absolute softest brush you can find, just about this length. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take an uh, it's, it's kind of a good idea to wet your brush down at first. I mean, you want the brush to be dry, but the reason I wet the brush down is I want to get water way down into the brush because if you just start using paint and get it drier and drier, it's going to dry in the brush and you'll never get it out. So after you dip it in water, then you want to dry it out really well. So take a paper towel and really, really get all of the excess moisture out. Now we still have moisture way down in the brush and that'll keep paint from drying way down in the brush. So we're going to take white and this is just straight white and probably put about a, uh, a tablespoon uh, or so of white on here. I have two layers of paper towels here. That's going to soak some of the excess uh, uh, moisture uh, out of the paint here. So I am just painting this paint around and right now my brush is loaded up it's got a ton of paint in it it's got way too much paint so i will brush this around brush it around brush it around and you want to pretty much get this almost completely empty of paint now if you brush over it and you get white like this that's way too much white. You got too much white on the brush, and that's why we're doing it on a test piece. So right here like this, that's way too much, way too much white. You don't want to do your pieces like this. So what I'm going to do, I will wipe out the excess paint from the brush. Just keep wiping it out and wiping it out. And then let's start over on the back side of this test piece. And if I brush over it and I hardly see anything, yeah, see, that's a lot better. So what I want to do is just very lightly hit it, very lightly hit it, and then try to get down into the windows a little bit, but I'm mainly just kind of icing this. I'm basically just trying to bring out the very sharp edges and highlights of this, because that's all we want to focus on. So at this point, it looks like it's uh, doing pretty good. That's just about what I want for the dry brushing right here. So what I would do is this point is I would set this one aside and I would work on my good piece until it no longer works. So I would take my good piece and go ahead and dry brush it. And then when I run out of paint, I will reload my brush up again on a paper towel. And after I reload the brush up on a paper towel, start with a test piece again because as soon as you do that oh my god look at all that white okay too much white whenever you load that brush back up again and try to start again fresh always start with a test piece when finished the piece should look something like this with the entire piece frosted in white with practice you can get just the right amount of paint to highlight the fine details without covering the surfaces with solid white the final step will be to stain the white outlines using food coloring I had good luck by mixing one part food coloring to four parts water. Mix this up and apply it all over the piece. 
Then squeeze out the brush and pull the excess back off of the piece. You can also soak the excess stain out of the brush by touching it to a paper towel. This will give you a rich highlight color on all of the edges. If the piece comes out too dark, then you'll need to add more water to the mix. The outlines of the piece should be almost as bright as they were when they were white, only lightly stained in the color you've applied. Now, I did run into one problem with the food coloring. What I did to make my purple glaze is I used red and I used my blue and I mixed the two together and it should make purple, right? Well, it doesn't and I don't know why it doesn't. But for some reason when I mixed the two together, it came up like this. This is the color it comes out to be. It's brown or almost black and I have no idea why it doesn't go purple. For the gray castle ponds, we're going to be dry brushing them in light gray instead of white. This light gray is made of three parts white and one part black. The reason that we're not dry brushing white is that there's not going to be a color glaze applied over top of it once we're done. For the main condottier piece, I'm going to dry brush it in dark gray. This dark gray is made of three parts black and one part white. This will add just enough highlight to it so that you can see the detail, but still know that it's a black piece. If you did end up using food coloring, it's probably a good idea to seal these pieces so the color doesn't come off on your hands. This will also protect the paint and make the piece more resistant to constant handling. This clear matte finish costs about $5 and will do a nice job. I prefer flat finishes on most of my pieces. I found that the best flat finish is Tester's Dull Coat, but it's pretty expensive for the small can and sometimes it's hard to find. Well, that's it for this video. If you want to see how these pieces were made and what game this is for, be sure to check out the description below. Thanks for watching.